are all comfortable with a coffee or tea in your hands because now several talks are coming. I'm Danny, as she said, I'm coming from the Earth Science Department and today I'm going to talk to you about mobility and air pollution. In here, you can see an image of our beloved Barcelona with most of the streets that we use in our daily basis to move around the city. However, during the last years, we have seen that some of these streets have suffered significant changes by the implementation of, for example, the super blocks. Some people like the implementation of these measures since they give them more space, but as it happens every time that you change something, these people against them. So you can see this from the media. For example, some media is saying that we have gained a lot of space in the city and we are very happy about that. But then we have more congestion now and we have also a so-called low emission zone, which is making to many people buy a new car. So why should I buy a new car? What is my freedom as an individual, right? Then some people is talking about the so-called fight against the car in Barcelona, from the city hall of Barcelona to the citizens. So I want to ask you, why is Barcelona doing all this? Is it necessary? Why aren't we good as we were before? And some of you would say, no, of course not, because Danny, we care about the environment. We care about emissions, and we care about reducing our concentration values. So this is one of the reasons. But then some of you would say, Danny, we care about our health. Air pollution is responsible only in Barcelona for 1,000 premature deaths every year, besides being the reason of other chronic diseases like asthma, which affects especially on children. Some of you will be more pragmatic and say, look, I only care about noise and about sleeping at night. And some others will say, we are doing this because Reta Thunberg tells us to do so, right? This is a trend in all Europe, all the cities are implementing traffic restrictions, so Barcelona is doing that as well. For the ones of you that are more familiar with the European Union legislation, you will know that actually Barcelona is obliged to do that. Actually, Barcelona has a problem in NO2. We are not complying with the values that the European Union uh, tell us to do. In here, I'm showing you the NO2 values over the last years in the city of Barcelona. The dashed line is showing you the value imposed by the European Union of 40 micrograms per cubic meter, and at the bottom you have the value of 10 micrograms per cubic meter that the World Health Organization tell us to apply. But we'll, we'll not look at this one because this is too healthy, so we'll stick with the 40. Barcelona has never been under this value in all their history, except, you guessed right, except for the COVID year. During last year and this year, due, due to the pandemic, we have managed to reduce our concentration values of NO2, a very toxic pollutant, below 40 microns for the first time. But by the end of the year, we are again over these values. So we have an air pollution problem in Barcelona, but you may ask, Danny, why are we only focusing on cars? We have other sources of air pollution. We have industries, we have a port, we have an airport. And yes, you are right, we have other industries, we have other sources, but when we are talking about traffic, about emissions at the street level, traffic is the main contributor of all. So in here, policymakers have to deal with a dilemma. They have to deal with the demands of all the road users, like cyclists and pedestrians, that they ask more space for themselves. They have to comply also with the demands of the European Union, and also they have to comply with the demands of the drivers, because many of them rely on their vehicles for the daily basis. Many of them use their vehicles for their work. So in here is where policymakers ask themselves how and which measures should I apply in order to, to satisfy all these three bodies. And here, my friends, is when we use Mare Nostrum, when we use data, and when we use modelization. Let me present you Calliope Urban. Calliope Urban is an air quality forecast system able to estimate air pollution in Europe, Spain, and Barcelona at a street level. We have combined this system with a traffic simulator which is able to estimate the vehicle movement around the city of Barcelona. So we can now implement all the restrictions that the city hall is implementing and observe the redistribution of traffic as a consequence of these restrictions. Let me show you this with an example. So in here we have the superblock of San Antonio that many of us are familiar with. So we take all the traffic, all the streets affected by restrictions in this, in this superblock and we implement them into the traffic system. We estimate how the vehicles will move around the area and then we compute the emissions. We compare the street scenario with the base case scenario. This is to say, the scenario without the restriction. And we then are able to observe the differences at every street that come as a consequence of these restrictions. 
So in here, what you see is in blue, the areas of the city that have decreased their concentration values as a consequence of the applied restriction. So this is good, we are doing right. But then what we are able also to see are rebound effects, are areas that have increased their concentration values, their pollution as a consequence of the implemented traffic restrictions. And this is something that we can see for the first time. And we don't only see that, we can know now where this is happening and apply measures according to it. But not only that, we can go into the future. We can get all the mobility policies that the city hall is trying to do over the next years in Barcelona and implement them into the system. So in here we have the low emission zone, in here we have all the super blocks, and in here we have the traffic demand that the city hall expects to occur during the next years in Barcelona, the traffic demand reduction. And in here, this is what we found. We are good, blue colors dominate now, so it means that we are managing to reduce pollution in Barcelona. We find reductions between 20 and 30 microns per cubic meter, so the measures are good, the measures are working, but are they enough? And in here, we have this guy again. Our results show that the measures are not enough in order to comply with the European Union guidelines. We are not going under this famous value of 40 microns per cubic meter. So we have to do more. But we don't have to go into an hypothetic 2024 year with an hypothetic demand reduction in Barcelona. We have COVID. We can observe what happened last year in Barcelona where we had a reduction in traffic of 30% as in average in all the city. So let's see what happened on the last year. So last year, even with a 30% reduction in the traffic activity in all the city, we still have values around 40 microns per cubic meter of NO2 in the main areas of the city. My point in this is that we cannot have a cleaner air in Barcelona only by the implementation of traffic restrictions. Barcelona need a drastic traffic reduction. And this can only be achieved by all of us by changing and rethinking our ways of mobility, how we move around the city. Because I would like to finish asking you a question. It's up to each one of us to decide what is the Barcelona that we want in the future. Thank you. Thanks a lot.